Prevention Council, and the Ad Council. You're now back in the booth with Big Man and Jay Lee on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the phone. Mark, you there? I'm here, fellas. I'm here. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mark, you there? <laughs> I, I saw a light move. I'm like, wait a minute. I think we might have lost him, but we got him. Mark Pankratz of the University of Tennessee men's basketball. Uh, I'm glad to be able to say that because at one time it we was, didn't. It wasn't looking so hot. It wasn't looking so good for our, it was for not our boy. So hot. It wasn't, wasn't looking so good. What do you mean? I wasn't for about a month. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he was clinically dead, basically uh. for 30 days. <laughs> Hey Mark. Hey, first of all, before okay. we get into the, to the congratulations on the wife and the baby yeah, and, and and everything. Well, he he had some of that and the rejob, yeah, <laughs> right, and the rehire. So before we get into the, before we get into the draft, Mark, just tell us how how that all go, how that happened. Because I know you were out of work, you were at the Final Four looking for a job. How did you end up coming back to Tennessee? Well, uh, as you guys know, uh, Coach Conzo Martin, who was uh, played at Purdue, is actually from East St. Louis. Uh, played in the the big dog era with Glenn Robinson uh, at Purdue when they won the Big Ten, and uh, so you know he didn't get many shots up, but still uh, <laughs> made, he was still uh, all Big Ten and uh, went went to the league a little bit. Was at uh, Missouri State last year, and then he uh, got the head job here at Tennessee, and um, you know just through the grapevine, and I introduced myself at the Final Four, and uh, through the people he met at the university, he gave me a chance to come back here and help with their camps which I've uh, run the last few years here. And, uh, you know, apparently I did enough to where he was uh, impressed by what I did, and he offered me the uh, director of video scouting position for him. Uh, so, yeah, my wife's from Tennessee, man, and, and Tennessee's a great place. And so I was definitely blessed and grateful for, for another opportunity here with him. Man, I, I, like I said, just happy as hell that you were able to, to, to get back to where you I know. I know I'm not I, happy. I, I'm disappointed. Why, why are you disappointed? I was banking on Pete being the head coach at DePaul. <laughs> I was I was looking forward to that, man. Uh, I just felt like it was it was natural. Exactly. Yeah. Well, well, you know my well, you know my pops played there. My dad played there. Right. That's what I was saying. And That's so, why I felt like that was a natural natural next step. I mean, I know it's unheard of to go from grad assistant to, <laughs> to head coach. Uh, but but, but, we, but we why gonna, not? We was gonna hey, book the trip. <laughs> but with you two on board, with you two on board, I might have a chance. Yeah, 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 I'm, we're gonna we're gonna push it. I'll be damned. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna start a petition. Uh, so, Mark, uh, you watched the draft, right? Yes, I did. Um, yep. Your boy Tob- Tobias Harris, who we actually talked about. Yeah, last time we had P on. When, 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 before the season started. Yeah. And uh, Jay, you brought him up how, you know, he's a special player. Yeah, I told him to sit him. <laughs> sit, sit him down. <laughs> sit him down so you can keep him. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, he played well enough to uh, to get, uh, what, was he picked 19th? 19th, 19th. yeah. And he's uh, with the Milwaukee Bucks. Talk about, I don't know if you've talked to him or been able to contact him. Just talk about him and uh, what kind of player the Milwaukee Bucks are getting. Yeah, I've talked to him, and, um, you know, he's a special individual just because, uh, you know, at this level you get a lot of kids at any level, even in, in high school or wherever they're at, that think that they're better than they really are. And, uh, a lot of you know, Tobias, Tobias, he got everything he deserved because he worked at it. Every day he's here, um, here at 6.30 in the morning getting shots up, and he was the first guy that uh, I've been around that, He's had a plan every day when he woke up and how he was going to get better to ultimately fulfill his dream. And uh, whether it was uh, eating right, you know, he uh, I tell a story all the time about his his roommate here, Trey Golden, who was our point guard um, on the road. He roomed with him, and Trey gave me a call after the second road trip and was like, Coach, I need you to change rooms. I need to change rooms. And he was rooming with Tobias. I was like, why? What's up? You guys are like best friends. And it was because Tobias – made him turn the lights out and turn the TV off at 10 o'clock because he needed to go to bed to get his rest up for the game. And uh, so that's, that's the type of kid Tobias is. Um, he's going to be great for, for Milwaukee. Uh, the city's lucky to have him because he's going to get out in the community and help, you know, whether it's the Boys and Girls Club or whatever it is. Uh, he'll get out there and he'll be a, a great role model for that franchise. Now, Talk about his skill set. Like, what, what's he bringing to like, on the court? What, what's he bringing to the Milwaukee Bucks? He'll have the vers- versatility to to not only shoot it, but to get the guys in the uh, mid post area. And uh, you know, whether if it's a bigger guy, he'll be able to uh, take him off the dribble in that mid post area out on the perimeter. And uh, the smaller guys, he can post up. Uh, as everything said, the big thing about him is his work ethic and his basketball IQ. 
uh, will is something that is it's really really hard to teach at this level. Um, and, and you see all the NBA playoff games, and you watch closely about the basketball IQ that those players play with, whether it's their defensive rotations or coming off ball screens and being able to read what the the second help guy's doing. Uh, Tobias has that ability, so um, he's going to embrace whatever other veterans take him under his wing. And, uh, you know, he might not make those flashes early on in the season, but I guarantee you come, you know, the end of the year, he's going to be out there making contributions for the Bucks. Tobias Harris entered the draft early, made it in, got drafted. Yeah, I have one more guy <laughs> that decided to come out early, Scotty Hobson. Mm-hmm. I mean, were you on board with him leaving? Did you feel like he left too early? I mean, how, how did you feel about him declaring? Well, we de- and just like Tobias, we definitely wanted them to come back, but um, you know, they they wanted to go ch- achieve their goals and their dreams. Uh, Scotty, you know, the same thing that we had said, we told him was uh, he could use a year of of um, maturing physically and mentally. Uh, but then again, you know, you look at his stat line of being of uh, 17 points a game. Uh, being first team All SEC and the athletic makeup uh, that he has, uh, he had a, a chance that, or he thought that he had a chance to get drafted. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. But you know, he'll make a, he'll make an NBA team, uh, make a a, a a training camp, and have the opportunity to prove himself once again. And uh, you know, we'll be behind him no matter where he ends up and, and whatever route he has to take to get there. But I do believe he will playing the NBA someday. Mark, what, what do you think it was? What do you think it was that, that kept him from well, getting well, drafted? I mean, I'll tell you what my issue with Scotty was. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I've watched Scotty. He's, he's been in, what, Tennessee three years now. Yep. And he came in. He was McDonald's All-American. And I just always felt like he had all the tools. He was athletic. He had the shot. He could take you off the dribble. But I didn't see it for 40 minutes. Like, I felt like Scotty Hobson could have been so much better than what he was okay and i felt like i kept waiting on that and and his freshman year i gave him a pass i was like he was a freshman he showed me flashes sophomore year he put it together for maybe two or three games then he'd scale it back a little bit but at the same time he was a sophomore last year it was the same thing and it's like you're an upperclassman now i need Mm -hmm. to see more out of you and i need to see that on a consistent level and i think that's what the nba scouts were looking at as well like he's got he's got all the tools there's 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 no reason why scotty hobson should not have been a lottery pick but it just seems yeah. like he just didn't bring it game in and game out. Well, it, it doesn't matter what field of work you're in, what business you're in. Uh, we all love people that we work with and work for yeah. that are consistent. And and if you're inconsistent, if you don't know what you're going to bring to the table every day, uh, that is a huge, uh, huge negative thing. Um, and Scotty made great strides, great strides. And, um, and you know, it didn't work out for him. Um, but I do, I really do think – if he continues to work on his toughness and his ball handling ability and just really, like you talked about, just staying engaged throughout the game, uh, the physical tools are already there. And, uh, I mean, not only that, I mean, he's physically and uh, talent-wise, he's probably one of the, like you said, top 15 guys in that draft. No question. Um, but as now we use as, a, as an example, um, you have to be a full package. You have to, when we talk to our guys, you know, it, it is about uh, the way you carry yourself, your mental makeup, uh, and being consistent and putting in the work every day. And, uh, you know, I think Scotty will learn from this, and uh, he'll be better off for it in the future. Um, in, inexcusable for him not to be drafted. Uh, some, and, of the, some of the guys that went in the second round, Scotty Hobson is better than and Inexcusable for him not to be drafted. That's I, how I feel. Personally. No, no, no I, I totally understand that. And and the thing is, we were talking about the second round on the, on the way here. Now there's so many players that were like kind of left off. And you're just like, you're telling me like the Lakers couldn't take him? Yeah. Or, hey, who the or, hell is Ak- Akhtar M- Majak? <laughs> but guys, as you guys know, as you guys know, once you get into that second round, it's not guaranteed money. Yeah. So rather than being drafted 50 through 60, you almost rather have the option of, okay, this is what this team needs. You know, I'm, I'd rather go to this training camp because they need wings as opposed to getting drafted by, you know, say the Celtics, for example, who might have a bunch of wings or, or whoever it might be. Yeah. Right. Um, so hopefully his agent will put him in position to, to pick out the exact training camp that he has the best chance of making the roster. Mark, we appreciate you calling in real quick. How do you feel about uh, this upcoming season, the, the recruits, 
Uh, did you, do you guys have any problem with the recruits and, and recruiting uh, after Bruce Pearl left? Uh, how, how's that going? Oh, we, we definitely had some turnover, uh, but that's normal. Anybody, any coaching changeover, you're going to have that. Um, but Coach Martin does a great job. You know, as, as you guys know, if you're able to relate to, to players uh, and to parents by your experiences, that goes a long, long way. And, and Coach Martin being able to say that he played in the NBA, NBA had success at the college level, uh, every one of his assistants, whether it's Tracy Webster, who was at DePaul, played at Wisconsin, uh, Kent Williams, who was uh, the second all-time leading scorer in Southern Illinois history, and John Harris, who played on Marquette's Final Four run team, is also from in Illinois. So uh, they they can always say, been there, done that type of thing to our players, which holds holds a lot of weight. And uh, SEC's loaded this year, man, with Florida, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, all going to be top 15. Yeah, but I think, yeah they uh, are. It's going to be a tough gonna, one this year. One thing I, I can guarantee you is that, that Tennessee's not afraid to uh, go out there and, and uh, be physical, and uh, we're going to bring the battle to them and, and just see who's left standing at the end of the game, and, and hopefully it's the team in orange and white. All right, man, man. Appreciate well, you, you know, calling in, man. Uh, P, you know I can't leave, let you leave without taking a shot at you. <laughs> bring it. Bring it. Please, no team barbecues. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Put the, we, put the grill away. <laughs> I, th- I think that's been I think that's been outlawed in the, in, in Knoxville. Put, put, all together. Put the grill away. <laughs> yeah, we, you don't have to worry about that. But I, I, I look forward to catching up with you guys again, man. Uh, Chicago, Illinois has always been great to me, and that's all. We're all it's home, home, man. This, this it's is home. home man. It's You're, home, baby. I, I, we gonna get you back here, man. You want to coach DePaul? You want to coach UIC? <laughs> uh, we could probably get Bruce Weber pulled out of Illinois if you want. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sooner or later, we can get him out of here. I know you, that. You give us an Illinois job, you want? We'll talk to somebody. And we will create the opening. <laughs> you got. You guys make it happen, huh? Well, we we got you, man. Uh, legally, uh, legally or uh, illegally, something's gonna go down. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate y'all. Hey, man. no appreciate problem, man. We appreciate you calling me, man. All right, peace. Stay good, man. All right. Stay good.